Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Prince of Peace, we call on you today. Hallelujah. Oh, Lion of Judah, come, oh, Lord God. Come sup with us, oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, Father, we ask you to send down the Holy Spirit, oh, Lord God. Send the Holy Spirit to be with us, Lord God. Send the Holy Spirit, oh, Father God. We come to you, oh, Lord God, in high expectation that you're going to join us here today. We come to thank you, oh, Lord God. We come to give you praise, hallelujah. We come to praise your name, hallelujah. We come to thank you for yet another week, oh, Lord God, of keeping us safe and of guiding us and taking us through all the trials and tribulations that we've been through this week. Some people have been dealing with death in their family. Some people have been dealing with all sorts of um, health issues. Oh, Lord. Oh, Father God. Some people have been dealing with financial issues. Maybe you can't even find enough to pay your, your mortgage, your rent. Whatever the issues, whatever it is that you've been dealing with, God sent me here to tell you just a little bit while longer. Hallelujah. He said he got you. Hallelujah. Your time is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your time is coming. Hallelujah. Everybody got their day. Hallelujah. Your season is coming. Your season. You just a little a little while away for your season. You know, trouble doesn't last forever. Come morning. And this is morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. So we're gonna rejoice and we're gonna be glad in it. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. If you have something to thank God for today, whatever it is, please put some peace in your heart and some love and some joy in your heart. Let's give him some thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. As you thank God, He can He keep giving you more grace. Hallelujah. Go through your storm. Hey. Whatever your storm is, God wanna give you more grace and more power to go through. God is saying right now, go through. Keep on going. Keep on stepping. One step at a time. One day at a time. Hallelujah. He's going to see you through. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Abba. Hallelujah. Thank you, Abba, Lord. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father God. My friends, uh, today God's, God's message is actually a continuation of last week's message where he's been talking about times of war and how to survive war. In, in this message today, he's talking, telling us about the mountain of the Lord. You know, I, I asked God, Father, why is that, you know, you give me such hard messages to bring? You know, I would prefer to bring the ones that just have all the, you know, good tidings and, you know, just pure, just everything sweet, nice words to soothe your soul, especially in a time of war. So I'm going to try to do that, but before we get to that point where we feel good, the Lord got some things on his mind, and I'm going to do my best to relate to you the message that he's feeding into my spirit for us all. So my friend, God is uh, sad. You might say, why would God be sad? He's God Almighty. But God gets sad sometimes when people are not, you know, living up to their, their best. 
He has high hopes for us all. He has high hopes for you and for me, for our children, our children's children, for all those that claim to be Christians. And as a matter of fact, for all of mankind, God has high, high hopes. God wants us to do better. He wants us to live better. He wants us to live in prosperity, not in poverty. He doesn't want us to know lack. But because of our decisions, our choices, the choices that we make determine the kind of life that we live. So that's why our prayer ought to be, help us to make really good choices, Lord, so we can get that great quality of life. Choices that are not in agreement with, with, with God's way of life. Choices to do things that are not in agreement to his commandments. Lead us astray. And when we are led astray, then the enemy, he has like, you know, a way to get in. To get into our lives and to make havoc. What I'm trying to say is God wants us to be good. I wish I could say it in a much more eloquent way, but it's kind of like be good or die. See, that might be a little gangster, but we must do good because, because there's a God to glorify and serve. We ought to be doing good because we want to avoid hell. Hellish life. Hellish lifestyles. Who wants to live a hellish lifestyle? I know I don't, and I know you don't either. And you wouldn't even be listening to this message. But our choices sometimes take us into a hellish zone. A zone where Christians like us, who are trying our best, doing our best, don't belong. And so we get into pain. We get it, you know, we get into uh, disease. Okay, so let me break down those kind of choices really low so that some people can really understand them, right? What about the choice to put soda into your system? What about that choice? You see, soda is very, very toxic. Yet, a lot of people especially older people just will they love a soda they'll drink a soda in a minute rather than a bottle of water or a glass of water why is soda so bad I mean there's nothing good about soda there's nothing at all good about soda soda causes inflammation in your joints we talking about making choices that lead to a hellish unhealthy lifestyle now people know this about soda. A lot of people know that soda is no good. Especially people who have diabetes. They know soda is no good, yet they still order a soda with their meal. They still refuse to eat a little healthier so that they can become a little healthier. Okay, so we talked about soda. I want to also talk about, you know, um, you know bad meat bad chicken, uh, people, a lot of people like um, pork, a lot of people like shrimp and uh, lobster. Mm, I used to love lobster, I used to eat shrimp. But then one, got, one day God said, no more shrimp, no more lobster. But today is a day, the kind of days, because God says, he declared that we are living in the last days. A time of great havoc when nations are against nations. When so much is so much of war is going on. So this is not a time to make, to make bad decisions that will lead you closer to death and hell. You see? I want you to think about the people that you're leaving behind too soon because you know that the statistics show that people of color we're dying at a faster rate than other races. Why? Why is that? Why are we dying at a, a faster rate? And why can't we have the discipline to change, 
to the choices that we make, the foods that we eat. If you know that your people are dying at a faster rate than everybody else, won't you then make the choices necessary so that you can live longer? It, to me, it's a no-brainer. But still, I see grown folks giving fried chicken and soda with some mac and cheese to elderly folk who are walking with a stick. If you're walking with a cane, you don't have any business with mac and cheese, soda, and fried chicken. If you're walking with a cane, you want to be doing green juice, water, ginger, turmeric, the power shop that we make here at Mother Earth Juice Bar will help you. Herbal, herbology, a lot of herbs will help you. You got to be paying attention to your health. So that's one of the things that irks God, that he's angry about. He's also thinking about the people who murder, murder, murder little babies. And then they say they want the right to choose, but okay, you want the right to murder, okay. I guess we'll try to figure that out. They want the right to murder. Because it's my body, I should be able to murder something in my body if I wanted to. Yeah, that thing in your body is a baby, it's life, okay. Some other things that God is angry about. God is angry about the child molesters. There's a lot of them out there. He's angry. He's angry. There's a lot of child molesters in homes where parents, mothers are sitting still and allowing it to happen. God is angry about these things. God is angry about the deaths of a lot of children all over the world right now. Every time you turn on the news, another child just died horribly. God is angry. God is angry about it. God is angry about anything that you put into your system to kill you. God is concerned. He's angry. Because how will you really serve him if you are unhealthy? So today I want to draw your attention to people who claim to be serving God, to be Christians. You see, God is angry about some people like that because some people said that they, they you know, I'm a Christian. They in a Christ, they're a Christian only on Sundays for two hours. The way they live their life, the other days, it tells you that they ain't no Christian. They're just a Christian conveniently, for sure maybe, or maybe for habit, because they've been used to maybe getting up and getting dressed on a Sunday and going to church. But how you live your life for the rest of the, the week? How do you treat your family? In some relationships, you know, I know some relationships where people get treated really good. The husband, the wife, they get treated really good. Some relationships, some uh, marriages are under attack. Family is under attack. God is angry at that too. A lot of divorce right now. People are not staying together. They're trying to just divorce and separate and do their own thing. Not many people are being patient in relationships. You know, let me let me try to stick it out. Let me see. Maybe maybe this man will change. Maybe this woman will change. Let me try to stick it out. This is a serious time that we are going through right now. And God needs some serious people. God doesn't need people just for Sunday for two hours. If you're serving just Sundays for two hours, and yet you want to reap all the discernment, you want to reap vision, and you want to reap this and that, no, you're just greedy. you just greedy, want things that you didn't work for. In order to serve God, you got to serve. You got to show up uh, on time. You got to show up when nobody else is showing up for work, nobody cares. Nobody cares to do the work. Because why? It's too much. Yes, we know that it's too much because it tells us in the Bible that there's work in the vineyard, but the laborers are few. Now, that's an understatement that there's work in the vineyard and that the laborers are few. Where are they? They have shirked the responsibility. They're just Christians on a Sunday. They come around 
looking nice, not really serving the Lord. They didn't come to serve. They didn't come to serve, no. They came to listen and to hopefully they hear some good news. Not this kind of news, but good news. Make them feel good so they could go back home. But God is saying he wants more. He wants your heart. He wants your service. He wants you to ask him, what more can I do, Lord, for you? He wants you to put him first. He wants all of us to put him first. He don't want just the preachers to serve. He don't just want us to do all the work. Because, yes, we already know that we're going to inherit the kingdom. See, I already know I'm going to inherit the kingdom because I've been serving hard. I've been serving diligently. I've been serving when there's nobody to serve around me. I still be serving. So I already know. But what about you, my friend? God wants to know what about you? What kind of service are you going to be doing for him? What are you going to be doing for him? Are you going to be changing your ways Monday to Saturday? Or are you still going to be doing the same old, same old, same old? What are you going to do? What are you going to change? How are you going to serve him? How are you going to wake up the people? How are you going to bring in more souls to the kingdom? This should be your thoughts every day. How am I going to bring in more souls to the kingdom? How am I going to serve the Lord? Hallelujah. Because right now he needs service men and women. Right now he needs laborers in the vineyard. Hallelujah. Right now he needs some people to really, really, really say and mean it when they say I'm a Christian. He don't need you just on a Sunday for two hours. He needs you every day. Bring your service. Come on. Bring it into the house of the Lord. He's crying out. I don't want to call anybody names, but some of us are lazy. Okay? Some of us just want to get the glory and don't want the service. Some of us just want to get dressed up on a Sunday and look nice, smell nice, and don't want to do the work. Oh, who, me? I look too good to serve. How am I going to look standing on the street corner giving out some flyers? How am I going to look? Some of us are just concerned about the way we look. Oh, I can't do that. I can't. Nobody don't want to come to church. I'm not going to go give out no flyers. Nothing. I'm just going to sit there and do nothing. I'm going to come up on Sunday, yeah. You see me in my nice clothes and everything on a Sunday. God wants more. What about the rest of the week? You see, you want what you want, but God wants you to serve. Hello. And then you get what you want. It's awfully quiet because nobody don't want to really serve God. So this is the this is the problem. Nobody don't really want to serve. People even want the title. They want the bishop, the, the pastor, the reverend, the this and the archbishop as far as they want big title all the time. Don't want to serve. Just want the title. So that this way they can probably call some other people if they have that much energy because they don't be having no energy to do anything regarding God's kingdom. What about diligently serve him do you not understand, my friend? This is what God is saying to you. What about diligently serving him? What about that? But there's a reward. Uh, a reward? Yup, there's a reward for those that diligently serve him. Did I get your attention now about the award? I hope so. God hopes that you will diligently serve because there's an award. Yes, an award. An award. What is an award? An award is a gift. Something that you get when you diligently serve. And you might be saying, hey, I have diligently served him. But my friend, if you didn't get your reward, get ready. Because it's coming to you for sure. He is a rewarder of those that diligently serve him. Now, if you don't have, if you never have, if, if you can never find your way, maybe you want to serve him better. 
strategically. Maybe you want to volunteer at a church and come up and try to serve the Lord. Maybe you want to volunteer for outreach team and help serve the Lord. Maybe you want to volunteer to do like a Sunday school and diligently serve the Lord. But my friend, unless you are diligently seeking him, your life is going to be kind of held back all the time. You know, you'll be always wondering, how come I never really, you know, get anywhere? How come it's been taking me so long? But when you start diligently serving him, you will see a change. Now, I want to tell you now what God says here. You see, he's talking about a lot of war still. And I said, why, Lord? Why all of this war? So I'm in the book of Micah. M-I-C-A-H, Mika. And Mika was a prophet. He was called a minor prophet, though, because he was not like a major prophet like Isaiah, let's say. But Mika was a prophet. And Mika prophesied war in uh, Jerusalem. He prophesied the ruin of Jerusalem. Why? Why did Jerusalem get ruined? Because people didn't want to really serve him. They didn't even like Jesus. Even though he was, that was his town. That's where he was from, that area. They didn't even like him. They were disobedient. You know, he sent his son and, you know, they, they didn't like him. They didn't like him. He wasn't Mr. Popular back then. So if you're not Mr. Popular or Miss Popular, Jesus wasn't either. They actually killed him. That's why a lot of people sometimes they don't want to serve because when you serve, it's like any army, when you serve, you you up against attack a lot of the times. You have to have certain qualities to serve and to serve well and to advance in the army of the Lord. You see, a lot of people want the advancement, the title, but they don't want the consecration. They don't want to go through all the hard work. They don't want to do all of that. They just want to get the titles. They don't want to go through all of that consecration. Why? Well, who wants to be thrown on the floor, consecrated and set for, come on. Who wants all of that? That's what we signed up for as clergy. See, we really needed to serve. We really had to serve. We, didn't, we don't really have a choice when God call you and he wants you in that army, you know, you know what time it is. You know you have to do what you have to do. You know, you feel it in your bones and your soul. You feel it. You know your whole being tells you, this is something I've got to do for the Lord. He's calling me. He needs me in his army. There's something more that I have to do to serve God. And I'm not going to fail God. When he calls me, I'm not going to run and hide. Because let me tell you, he will find you. You cannot run from the Lord. He will find you. A lot of pastors right now are, you know, getting very, very disillusioned because, you know, a lot of times the, the small churches, are not newer, smaller churches, not doing very well because not a lot of people are ready to serve. The older churches, the older smaller churches might do a little bit better because there's old folks in there who this is they have it they get up and they go to church the newer gen generation they don't get up and go to church they might turn on the tv maybe but they're not trying to get up and go to church so a lot of churches are closing down hey because there's nobody to serve god it's kind of like you have a big castle with no servants. A big castle and a lot of work to do, but no servants. Now that's tough. Who's gonna, who's gonna do things? Who's gonna cook? Who's gonna take care of the place if there's no servants? Or if the servants are concerned about their own, just their own self and their own family? Who's gonna take care of things? Who's gonna, who's gonna help the community? So it's a sad space where, where we are at this time. 
where a lot of people, nobody is really trying to serve the community. They're just asking God for a lot for themselves. And nobody really cares that much about the community because it's not in their soul. It's none of their business. They don't, I don't have to do this. If it's your job, you do it because you're getting paid. But as far as like trying to serve, really, really serve, a lot of people are not trying to do that. And so that's why we have a problem. Because a lot of people want to be saved, but they don't want to serve. Wow. In the book of Mika, Micah maybe, Okay. Mika 4. So in Mika 4 verse 1, it tells us about the mountain of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, the reason I didn't start at Mika 1 through 3 is because God is angry in Mika 1, 2, 3. So I just tried my best to tell you some of the reasons why he's angry, right? So that we can get to kind of like a good part. So we don't have to go through all the disaster and the, um, you know, all the, there's a lot of disaster here in the one to three leaders and prophets rebuked, a lot of rebuking here. Whoa, wow. There, it's, it's, tear, it's going on. It's going on. It's like a battle going on in 1 to 3 where God is like, you know, he's saying, ask for my prophets who led my people astray. If one feeds them, they proclaim peace. That means if, you, if you're if saying good things to the people, only good things are not really the message of God, they like you. God is saying all sorts of stuff. He said, night will come over you without visions. You won't get no more visions. No more divination for you prophets the sun will set for the prophets and the day will go dark for them the seers will be ashamed all of them there's a lot of stuff bloodshed wickedness wickedness bloodshed Woo. all right but in Mika 4 it tells you that there's a mountain in the last days the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills and peoples will stream to it. So there's this mountain of the Lord that he is, is, is establishing for his true prophets, for his true servants, the ones who are always up ready to serve. He could call on them, he could send them a little mess message, a little whistle. Hey there. And they up. Yes, Lord, here I am, ready to serve you. Anything else, Lord, that you want of me? You see, this is the kind of servants that God wants. Okay? <clears throat> Many nations will come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways. So that we may walk in his paths. The Lord will go out from Zion. The word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the peoples. He will settle disputes for strong nations far and wide. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Okay. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Every man will sit under his own vine and under his own fig tree, and no one will make them afraid. For the Lord Almighty has spoken. All the nations may walk in the name of their gods, and we will walk in the name of the Lord forever, forever and ever. It goes on to tell you that God has a plan. Okay, the Lord's plan. In that day, declares the Lord, I will gather the lame. I will assemble the exiles and those I have brought to grief. I will make the lame a remnant, those driven away a strong nation. The Lord will rule over them in Mount Zion from that day and forever. Hallelujah. So God has taken us to a nice place. God has taken us to 
a strong place, a high tower, higher ground, okay? Where God has taken us, not many people are going to get to go there because they don't want to serve, you know? But a lot of people are going to get there because of their service and their family's service. So maybe you don't like to serve, right? But maybe your mom did. Maybe your grandmother did, or your granddad, or your dad. Maybe your dad made sacrifices, made sure he put God first, and did things to serve God. And so by the grace of God, you are within that number. You're in that number where you are going to be the selected. Everybody want to be selected. Well, there, there is a criteria to be selected. The criteria is you have to have love in your heart and show it to people. You've got to go out of your way, out of your way to serve. A lot of people don't want to go out of their way to serve. So a lot of people don't get advanced in the kingdom. A lot of people, you know, think they're too young to serve. You know, there's a lot of reasons people don't want to serve. But we want to thank God. If you want to serve, we want to thank God for you and for your family. And if you want to be serious about serving, if you don't want to just serve um, in bed, from bed, you know, so there's a lot of people they want to serve from the bed. What I mean by that is that they don't want to get up on a Sunday to, or a Saturday they don't want to get up to come serve the Lord. They just lay there or, you know, and then they say they're sick. You will get better if you make an effort to serve God. When you put God first, he makes all the desires of your heart happen. So we come to thank God for making all the desires of our hearts to happen this day and forevermore in the name of Jesus. We come to thank you, Father God. We come to thank you for the opportunity to serve. You see, there's a lot of people serving God. It's like, we, you know, when they call you, they recruit you in the army. Ain't nobody want to go and serve in the army? Do you know anybody who just willingly really want to go serve in the army? Why? In the army, it's dangerous over there. You might get killed. Well, let me tell you. It's not a picnic over here serving God in the army of the Lord because the enemy is always gunning down for you. The deciding factor, all right, the crying glory is that we got the Almighty on our side. We got the protection of the Lord on our side. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let me tell you about the benefits. Hallelujah. Let me tell you about that reward. Hallelujah. You see, people don't know about the reward. All they can see is the work. Hallelujah. But for those who diligently seek him and serve him, oh, the reward is big. He comes when you call. When you need him, he is there. Hallelujah. You don't go hungry. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, you get all sorts of blessings. Hallelujah. If you can diligently serve him, you will see life open up for you. A better life. A better tomorrow. You will see your quality of life expand. You will see your quality of relationships expanding. You get power and strength. Ooh, you get the power to manifest blessings. You can speak blessings. You get discernment. Discernment where you can see into the hearts of men. Hallelujah. And you get advanced. Way, way, way advanced than your peers. The more service, the deeper the level of service, the way you serve. If you want to serve joyfully, you can. You can serve grudgingly. You get grudging reward. Very, very, very grudging reward. That means your quality of life, not too good for a long time. The quality of your life is in equal proportion to your service. As you serve him, and try to serve him with, you know, try to make good choices for people like husbands and wives who like serving God, who want to serve God too. Because if you're married to someone or seeing someone and they don't want to serve God, then they will pull you down. 
and it's now a little harder. So you want to try to make choices to be with people who are on the same page and know and want to serve God, want to know God better, want to read about Him, not just on Sundays, want to read about Him during the week, want to make plans for Him, hallelujah. You see, you got to make plans to serve God. You got to make plans to do things that serve God. What kind of plans are you making? Is it just to serve yourself? And your family maybe any plans in there for the Lord to serve God because he got plans for you but his plans for you the greatness of his plans for you and your family depend on your level of service so if you're serving him halfway or even just this teeny bit well that's the teeny bit of uh, quality of life, good quality of life or bad quality of life, depending on your service of, to God. So when you think about God again, the next time you think about God, ask Him how you can serve Him better. What would He like you to do? And then do it. Even though it might be hard, you might be busy, you might have too much to do, but you still got to put aside time to serve God. Because at this time, God really needs us and His army. If the real Christians don't show up, you see, there's so many people say they're Christians, but they're not really Christians, okay? They're just on an ego trip. You are a real Christian based on your service to God. Not your service on Sundays, but your service throughout the week. As you do things for God's people, He will continuously bless you. As you make an effort to show up for God. Maybe it's on a street corner. Maybe it's in a, a, a wherever. But whatever you do, you got to think about how you can serve God. Not just on a Sunday. And if you could do that, then you will see your life enriched and your quality of life much better. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for the word today. Thank you, Father God, for blessing us and for keeping us. And we thank you for the advancement into the kingdom. We thank you for advanced everything. We just thank you, Lord God. We thank you, thank you, thank you. And we love you, Lord God. We love you and we want to serve you. If you want to serve God and the army of the Lord, if you're ready to serve God, if you're ready to make this your 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 testimony, your time to serve God. Don't wait. This is the time to serve God. There's no better time than now to truly serve God. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. There's no better time than now because it says here these are the last days. You can see for yourself. You see all the war going on around you. If you want to be saved, you got to push up yourself a little bit more and serve God. Stand up a little bit more and serve God. We know that most people have ego and are self-serving. They want to do things to serve and save themselves. But nobody can save you at this time from all of the calamities that this world is going through but God. So if you're going to serve somebody, don't serve man. You see, every day you wake up and you go to work. Those that work for someone. Every day you wake up and you go diligently to serve for money, right? For financial recompense. Uh -huh. So God is asking you, when you wake up, can you serve me too? And not just give your life to serve a man day in, day out, Monday to Saturday, you go to work. What about God? What days during the week can you give to God? Can you give him one day during the week at least? Or how many days? Days, how many hours can you give to God to improve the quality of life for others? If you could do that, then you will get all your heart's desires. All of them. God will be so pleased with you. And he will answer your prayers all the time. You'll be able to dial him up and hear from him. This is the this is the reward of those that diligently seek and serve Him. So I hope you received it today. Amen.
All right. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're looking to serve God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you. We love you. Until next time, we hope you would subscribe and please share this message. Come on down. We would love to hear from you. We'd love to see you. We'd love to help you. We'd love to serve God with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen. You can reach us at 917-720-2485. Uh, if you have some time to serve, come on down. We want you here at Inspire New York, People's First Baptist Church. Thank you. God bless you.